a recent report about the train derailment in Ohio that uh, resulted in all these toxic chemicals being released into the environment and has so far killed thousands of fish has just shown that the color of the water in the Ohio River has changed. This is another concerning signal about the potential environmental and safety fallout of this incident. And this is the kind of incident I imagine that could be used to justify a climate emergency. And how much would that look like the COVID emergency we're still living under? Well, let's look at the facts. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And, and we're, we're over, over the, the target. target. In terms of the fallout of the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, I, one of the most concerning things we're seeing is the symptoms that people are talking about where they're getting rashes, they're, they're finding blood in their stool, they're vomiting. The, the concerning thing is that we, we don't know what this could lead to. We're seeing these initial signs, but we don't know what the, the longer term health effects could be. We don't know what the longer term effects on the environment could be. And these symptoms are linked largely to the industrial chemicals that have been leaked or intentionally released um, because of this train derailment. And in the face of a hazard like this, it's understandable that there would be calls for some kind of drastic action to be taken to prevent something like this happening again in the future. Right. We've also seen indications, I believe, that, um, you know, the fallout from the derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, uh, may be spreading to other parts of the country. So, of course, this is of great concern. It's clearly a humanitarian disaster, uh, an environmental disaster as well. If soil and water have been poisoned and if people, American citizens, are suffering from this, this is clearly a disaster. And as ghoulish as it is, it would hardly be surprising to see our government, both the federal government and state governments, use this horrible crisis to take advantage uh, of the situation and to turn it into a climate emergency. We have to remember this is precisely what happened with COVID. Right? We saw people getting extremely sick. They turned this into a, an emergency and started acquiring different powers on this account. Yeah, I think if we want to look at the COVID emergency as a point of reference for this, uh, President Trump declared a national emergency in, in early 2020, I believe. Following this, we had state governments, federal government declaring public health emergencies, also the, the World Health Organization. In terms of a, a climate emergency, as a point of reference, we have a statement from the Center for Biological Diversity, and they've actually called on the Biden administration to take the following actions to ban crude oil exports, to stop oil and gas drilling on the outer continental shelf, and to curtail international trade and investment. This would have no small impact on, on America's economy. And this is just looking at the economic side, disregarding the kind of social impacts that we saw with the COVID lockdowns. And with the uh, climate lockdown, they would clearly target fossil fuel energy and a whole bunch of other things. The larger picture, I think we have a pretty good idea of what emergency, uh, what, what a climate emergency would look like. We saw it, we saw it under COVID-19 and people are still shocked by it. Closing down schools, closing down churches, restaurants shut down, people staying home. Uh, an emergency situation means the situation is not normal. What happens then? Abnormal people rise to the fore with their abnormal desires for power and all sorts of things. I think a perfect illustration of this is I'm sure most of our viewers will remember the video of a police boat chasing down a paddleboarder off of Malibu. It's absolutely nuts. And we're likely to see something like that again happen under emergency powers. We saw a, a really concerning array of, of actions taken, not just in America, or across the world. Australia is, is off note with the, the quarantine camps they set up and putting people into quarantine camps who were who weren't vaccinated because they apparently represented such a, a grave risk. Mariana Mazzucato chairs an economics council for the WHO, and she's indicated that a climate lockdown may be necessary and the kinds of restrictions that that might entail. For example, limiting private vehicle use, banning the consumption of red meat, and imposing extreme energy saving measures so, I mean, just the, the idea of, of people not being able to use their cars, this is, this is heavily restrictive and, and, and very limiting of people's freedom of movement. And the kind of nutty ideas that would be implemented. We have to stop eating red meat. 
people would, be, people would not be able to drive their cars. Those are precisely the kind of measures that lunatics would impose on the United States again, as we saw the fanatical, insane measures imposed on Americans during the COVID lockdowns. Remember, these things give power not only to the federal government and state governments and local governments, they also empower fanatics. And that's part of what would happen here. And it's not just us, Lee, who are making the comparison between the COVID emergency and a potential climate emergency. We know that Barack Obama in 2020 uh, tweeted basically suggesting that we've had the COVID emergency and maybe in the future, even harsher measures may be needed in a climate emergency scenario. Yeah, this has been part of the Democratic Party uh, wish list for quite a while. I mean, there's, you know, we know that the Hillary Clinton campaign in 2016 talked about her imposing a climate emergency uh, when she took office. Thankfully, she didn't take office, um, but and, and have a chance to impose a climate emergency. Unfortunately, Donald Trump did uh, did call for a COVID emergency. And we can certainly see that as, as, a, as a dry run. I, I think that if Donald Trump were president again, he may do it all. He, he would have done it differently. But we can certainly see what happened, that this may be uh, considered a dry run for a climate emergency. They've already seen the different levers they need to pull and what they can get away with. So again, this is certainly something, if it's not going to be initiated, and we hope it's not going to be initiated, by the derailment in Ohio, we can be quite certain that they're looking for opportunities. Why? Again, because the Democratic, senior Democratic Party officials have been talking about this for several years. I think it's easy to see how Obama, how Hillary Clinton have been able to appeal to many voters' sentiment about the environment because many people are really concerned about this. This would appeal to many people. As a child, I believed that, that we had to basically shut down civilization. This was from the education I was getting as a child 40 years ago, 35 years ago, that was the answer. We had to, you know, stop cars and, and collapse civilization, and that would, that would see us through to the future. The point is that what's being suggested, the kind of solutions that are being suggested, won't necessarily help the environment. One good example of this is the movement in Nevada protesting against a major lithium mine where they're going to be getting lithium for lithium batteries. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who are writing about this, the problems with the renewable energy infrastructure. It's not good for the environment. The idea that rare earth minerals are going to be pulled from the ground, it's going to affect the soil, it's going to affect the water. I mean, frankly, what it looks like, it looks like the environmental disaster that's been caused by the train derailing in Ohio. So that, that's what the clean energy industry is, replicating that disaster, not only in the United States, but around the world, including Africa, where we know that child slaves are uh, employed to pull rare earth minerals out of the ground. What you were talking about before, Brendan, talking about that this is what you were taught as a child, this is still what's going on. It's a millenarian message. And this is who Barack Obama was. The world is coming to an end. And if we don't do something about it now, if we don't overturn the universe, uh, the next generation won't live to see it. Well, how many generations are we going to keep getting that message? Right? What they're doing is they're taking advantage of people, many of them weak people and actually children, by frightening them. But this is only the larger messaging operation because there's something else going on behind the scenes here that's apart from what they're saying about uh, the clean energy industry. This worries children, you know, it, it depresses children. They're led to believe that the world is gonna end and it's a tough burden to carry as a child. I carry that to some degree. I think it's even, the pressure is even, even stronger now. And the point you're making is, what is the motivation behind this? Are they really about saving the environment? And the, getting back to the example that I mentioned before, what's happening in, in Nevada, where we have a, a small environmental group called Protect Thaco Pass. They're protesting against a, a lithium mine in Nevada. Their concern is that in the event that a climate emergency is declared, this will kind of take the, the reins and the restrictions off what kind of mining can be done in the name of a climate emergency, in the name of of protecting the environment, de developing things like uh, green infrastructure. So they could bypass, they could potentially streamline uh, federal financing to these kinds of projects like lithium mining, and they may not be susceptible to the kind of 
environmental review and compliance with the National Environmental Policy Act that the current mining organizations have to comply with. If you're enjoying this condensed episode of Over the Target on YouTube, you can find the full version on Epoch TV. Catch us exclusively on Epoch TV, where you'll find not only Over the Target, but all your favorite Epoch shows, including Brendan Fallon's Vital Signs.